Hello and welcome to another art vlog. I have a special guest with us today. He is a close friend. He's a close uh, wow buddy, close wow boy <laughs> to me, my fellow coworker and character designer, Wilder Reese. Hey, thanks for having me on. Dude, I'm happy to have you on. I have something really special for you today, actually. Really? I have your own lower third. Are you ready for this? Uh, yeah. Oh, right now you oh. should be seeing a little animation. Right here? <laughs> That's Damn. Right. Very, very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. I made that in After Effects. I, I wish I brought uh, a gift for you. Or I guess I have some artwork for you, right? That's true. You do have some artwork for me. Nice. I'm, I can't wait to see it. So tell tell the viewers at home uh, what you do. Uh, yeah, I'm a character designer on Rick and Morty, the same show as this guy over here. That's wow. how I scored this interview. You sit across from me. That's true. Yeah. If you ever uh, want to be on this show, just get a job at Rick and Morty and... You know, Brent will have you on. That's an easy way to get on this show. <laughs> now, I will say it's very hard to get on Rick and Morty. True, true, You have to true. take a test. Which you did. Yeah, yeah. I, I tested into, into Solar Opposites, actually. And then I uh, kind of made my way over here. Wow. Swindled my way into a job. Now, that now a character character design is quite a coveted position. I mean, it takes some skill. It, it definitely takes a lot of hard work, a lot of hours, as does props as the storyboard just stuff no, I, I just i scooted it under the radar <laughs> that's how it works yeah a lot of bribery a lot of yeah. lying stepping on people's heads <laughs> it's it's la you know like when i first came to la like i feel like people just tell me like dude the people in la they just can't wait to stab you in the back there's definitely a couple of bodies in my wake yeah i'll, I'll say that well, good. So I believe you brought with us your some of your current work because I want to show people what your current work looks like. Yeah, bring it up. Okay, here we go. We're going to switch over to the desktop. Wonderful. So now we can kind of establish who you are before we get into your uh, embarrassing background. Right, right. Tell me about these guys right here. These are some characters I did uh, in my senior year at LCAD. I went to Laguna, Laguna College of Art and Design. Uh, these are all done in graphite. I, uh, in school, I had the lofty idea that I wanted to do character designs for my senior project, which uh, I th think seemed kind of dumb at the time just to focus on character, but it ended up working out. Um, so yeah, I just like slaved over these for hours. I'm actually reworking them. Wait, you're reworking them? Yeah, it's taking a really long time. How do you, how do you re <laughs> rework something like this? Are you literally erasing parts of it and going over or are you drawing it again? So these in real life are much lower contrast and they maxed out at like an HB. Uh, and okay. I just scanned them and I put curves on them. Yes, in I understand. Photoshop. And then when I, uh, I'm having a gallery show in April at the Animation Guild and I realized, oh no, these are all super low contrast drawings. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm having to go back in with a 2B, a 4B, and darken them, which just takes hours and hours. That's okay. I learned from a very early age how to hide my mistakes with a computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I've been there. Yeah, one of them actually has, uh, like, a bug got splatted on one of them, and I'm trying to figure out how to remedy that. Is that so. the darkest part of it? Uh, it's in the white, but <laughs> oh, it's... No. it's, it's We'll see. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Yeah, these are some more of the same. Um, I don't know what more to say. I like this guy. They're with beautiful. That. Now, what's the story? Like, you, it's an opera singer. I mean, there's a very specific style. There's they're a um, little bit puppety, a little bit like yeah, Gumby esque almost. I would say. I, I intended for these to be in a book where there would be a caption beneath all of them, um, and then I kind of just chickened out and didn't really oh, is, put them in a book. Is, is there like... <laughs> they do have captions on my Instagram. I can't quite remember uh, what they were. They were trying to be kind of funny. Uh, it was all just an excuse to get to do characters for my senior project. I, yeah, I if I just wrote down in my thesis, like, I just want to draw fun characters. Mm. Let me do that school. No, you can never do that. Yeah, so there, has to be to... A, there has to be a conceptual reason for everything in school, which exactly. is BS. Exactly. Yeah, in the real world, you don't have to have a reason for doing things. Or if you work in the in industry, a writer just tells you to do things. You don't have to actually think of the exactly. idea. Exactly. It's a lot easier. Uh, let's take a look at some colored work. Oh, this is amazing. Some, I, some props. I'm a prop guy, so this is very exciting for me. Yeah. Look at, look at these springs. That is great. Oh, actually, my spr the springs are my least favorite. <laughs> no, I like them because they're wonky. That's great. Now this this looks to like a little bit of maybe graphite and then a little. No, no, this is pencil. all all digital. Oh, all digital. Uh, I actually have 
a, a YouTube channel that has just one of those sped up painting videos of this. Ooh, speed paints. Yeah, that has under a hundred views, but um, well, you guys can see how it's done. Well, you, we can link it. We can link it below if you guys want to see. Oh shit! Now this is this is what being a character designer is all about. Yes, right here, right. As I learned from from Bam. Wait, you learned from Bam? <laughs> well, I remember. Actually, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but sure. Well, say, say what say what you think. <laughs> well, there was a test that I did for a show that mm -hmm. involved doing a turnaround, and I studied illustration in school, so. I hadn't done a great deal of turnarounds. I think I'd done one turnaround and it wasn't in Photoshop. It was just on paper and I didn't get to play it as a GIF. So when I saw that test and it had a turnaround on it, I was like, oh shit, better Google <laughs> how to turn around. Wait, did the BAM thing come up? Yeah, the BAM wow. thing came up. I learned all about the timeline. If you guys don't know about the timeline, check it out. Link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and after the test, I was like, well, worst case scenario is I get the job and don't know how to do turnarounds very well. So I, I, uh, I practiced doing turns. I looked up Max's Pickle Rick turn, which yeah, is on Google. That's a good 16 point turn there. <laughs> and I, I tried to, you know, get as close to that as I could. And this is the result. No, it's wonderful. And you don't have to, I mean, there's nothing really to hide. Like, yes, being a character designer, you have to do turns. Mm -hmm. And if you get a test, there will probably be a turn on that test. Um, the BAM quote was that 85% of the job is doing turnarounds, which I guess it depends on the show. Right. There's a lot of uh, special poses and stuff in Rick and Morty, so maybe it's a bit less than that. But in general, a, a meaty portion of your job is going to be doing turns. So get as good as this as you possibly can. I love this. I mean, it's all rotating in perspective. The legs are going around. The feet are very solid. Thank you. It took a really, really long time. Is this a, is this a 16 point turn? <laughs> it is a 16 point turn. Dude, that's lovely. Thanks. Well, let's look at a few more here. Another prop. This is amazing. Well, this is, I guess, part of an environment. Yeah, yeah. These are uh, all of these ones with the orange are all kind of like train. Uh, I mean, I love me it? some trains. Yeah, train yard. Like that last guy was a conductor. There's the ticket booth. This is the train. And then we had the caboose. And then these are all the guys. This is just personal work I did. Uh, kind of out of school, trying to trying to keep busy. You know, a lot of people don't actually do personal work anymore after they get out of school. Like a lot of people that I went to school with, like they pretty much stopped, but they didn't really have a lot of like artistic like desire or maybe they did, but then school squashed it out of them. Well, I'll tell you what, when you actually start working in the industry, that's that'll really squash <laughs> oh, it. Yeah, yeah, that's why I do videos now because it's a lot easier than drawing. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Go for it, don't worry, I can hold the show. So now, so now that we've established credibility, I want to destroy you from the inside out. Let's do it. Man. And I've I've asked uh, Wilder to bring in uh, some of his uh, early art because we saw how great he was. We know he's a character designer, Rick and Morty. We know he's a superstar. We know he has that MPI health insurance <laughs> that is so heavily coveted. Um, but now I want to see where it all began. The really embarrassing stuff. So right. did you bring something truly embarrassing today? Um, I think I did. I think I did. Uh, I don't know. Should we bring it up? Let's bring it up here. Let's bring it up. All right. Uh, what what should we start with? What are you most interested in talking about? Um, how about how about the first thing up in here? My uh, no no no, no. one dot jpeg. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pull it up here and then we're gonna switch. <laughs> um, are you guys ready for this? It's exciting. You can't see what we're looking at yet, but we'll switch. A self portrait I did in uh, I'm guessing the year two thousand. <laughs> Uh, this oh, was, wow! It was one dot JPEG. It was an assignment for uh, Dude, look at this. drawing yourself at 100 years old. Look at this! <laughs> look at this fucking tangent right here. <laughs> Actually, when I uh, <laughs> sent this to people at work, they thought the castle was growing out of my shoulders. <laughs> Dude, it, I mean, I can tell it's in the background. But wait, is this tree in the foreground? Is it going in front of you? I, what? Who knows, dog? Okay, who okay. Knows? Okay, so tell me, you. this was maybe you at 100, and what did you think your life was going to be like? Um, I definitely thought I would be Asian. <laughs> okay. I definitely thought I would own a castle yes. um, and a tree. My can teeth you really would be really fucked up, apparently. Look at those teeth. Jesus. Can I, you... That's pretty real. Oh, right? dude, look <laughs> at this That's 100-year-old's teeth. Wow. <laughs> I would have a mustache. 
I mean, we all desire something like that. I would develop some eye problems. Wait, what's going on here? Is this like a dragon koi so that's centipede? Definitely the dragon from Spirited Away, which you haven't seen. No, I haven't so seen. So you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I've only seen one Ghibli movie, and it was Howl's Moving Castle. I'm uh, a bad. I'm a bad. Yes. Animator. Slam him in the comments for mm. that. Um, well, so you, now we there is about an 80 percent, almost 90 percent drop off rate on this uh, oh, vlog. God. Well, that's why we're starting with the bangers first. Yeah. That's why we're <laughs> so getting all the these bangers. incredible drawings right at the right at the beginning. So if you are still <laughs> watching at this point, you need to comment. Slam Brent. Brent. Because, Brent watched Spirited Away. Yeah, Brent watched Spirited yeah. Away. TLZ. Anyway, yeah, there's a guy that turns into a dragon. You kind of see him in the distance. It looked exactly like that. What's the yin yang? Are you going to establish like some sort of balance in your life? <sighs> Who knows, man? Okay. Who knows? Who, what's with the ocean? Um, now, did, I, you, <laughs> did you mean to be this cool and slanted? I just noticed that <laughs> I... I erased a bow tie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thought about putting a bow tie on, and then I was like, no, I wouldn't wear a bow tie. No, that's that too on. classy. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do this. I may have tried to erase my cleft. What's coming out of here? Is this chest hair, or is this like folds? Or It's definitely the same as whatever is on my left shoulder. Uh, oh, you're going to have... Um... But I don't know what that is. It's some blue... Uh, I believe this is a uh, Zerg creep. Yeah, it's something like that. My, yeah. Some kind of disease. Yeah, I've got some of it on my arm down there. Yeah, you well. you've been blighted a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like the end of. Um, oh my God! There's so many little nooks and crannies. Look at the very bottom left. I've tried to fit the fingers in there. Like, <laughs> to, oh no! I didn't leave enough room. I mean, I, it's. I mean, is this fingers or is this the the railroad lines? They're kind of like the end of. Uh, Requiem for a Dream. Oh, maybe. Yeah, there could be... The foreground might be the ocean, and I might just be gigantic. Okay, okay. I was going to say, is this like one of those cool ocean shirts, or are you in I water? I think it's a cool ocean shirt. I think this is a Guy Fieri uh, <laughs> Japanese matchup, kind of. Or maybe not Japanese. I don't know what the yin-yang is, but you get me. Now, do you have this... Did you... Have you obtained any of this? Did you get a cleft chin? Did you get the uh, teeth? Did you get the I glasses? I think my teeth are deteriorating pretty fast. Uh, I, mean, I am you... starting to get some worry line or are these called worry lines or uh maybe a little bit it, I mean let me ask you this do you floss um I have these well I use toothpicks a lot as you know which is kind of oh no, that's a, that's not small enough a meme around the office yeah. that I've always I always have a toothpick <laughs> after lunch um and I tried to buy toothpicks at Ralph's but they only have these like futuristic toothpicks that have little rubber things on them to really clean out your teeth and oh dude those are great well my de my dentist highly recommends those. really yes, Thank God. yes you actually need to use those um i have a dentist who is on me all the time for not also doing that i mean she wants me to do like five things like i gotta floss i gotta use the rubber thing i gotta use a golden tip rubber thing and then i gotta use the gum like salve mm -hmm. it's 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 part of a balanced breakfast well that's really good to hear, actually. I was worrying maybe it's like, are these just like widening no. the gaps in my teeth? You want to use those. Thank God. A pure chance. <laughs> pure chance. But I don't floss. I only use those, really. I think I, I, yeah, that's fine. You know, something is better than nothing. So let's, I feel like we've gotten all the content out of this. Okay. Are you ready to move, Are you ready to go to the next one? Uh, yeah, I already can't remember what the next one. Oh, the right. The next JPEG. one is, uh, is, is one of my stories. Oh, so time. I believe this is from first grade or kindergarten. Maybe even, maybe, maybe kindergarten. So this is a, this is a book that you wrote. Yes, this is uh, a novel. Are you, should we turn the page? Should we open up? Yeah, Time by Wilder Reese. What are you guys expecting? Like some kind of, maybe, I mean, existential. I, yeah, it's very existential. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think of the Pink Floyd song. Okay, is this going to work? I think we have to go one at a time. All right. Bam. Oh my god. What is this murloc Well, why, why, why don't you read the... Uh... <laughs> One morning, Blaze up and got out of his dungeon and spit out a blaze as hot as a volcano. Yep. Oh, it's a dragon. It's some sort of lizard <laughs> demon creature. Here's this is the horns. opening scene of time. I mean, you have uh, to... Just right... First frame is just... <laughs> you got to start strong. It's like a James Bond movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Action sequence. We got Blaze. We got... He's spitting out something as hot as a volcano. 
You know, teachers do love to say that. Like, you need to wrap in your audience. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a teacher just said, have something really cool at the beginning. And I was like, what's cooler than a dragon rising out of a volcano, spitting out magma? Well, no, he rose out of a dungeon and spit oh, out. A dungeon. And his spit was as hot as a volcano. <laughs> okay, shit. Okay, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, I, th I believe that dragons live in a dungeon. And you even signed up here. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's kind of like, it's very Murloc-esque here, very alien-esque, and then there's just red. I did attempt a background, it looks like. Yeah, we've got some indication. Oh, wait. Oh, Look, no, Look, there's no. a second dragon down here. <laughs> Never mind. I think I think these are all just... There was other dragons behind this one. <laughs> or maybe just I attempted Blaze three or four times before I really got it right and nailed in this... Uh... I mean, if you watch BAM, you know that you should draw everything <laughs> like three times. Okay, let's True. go to page... Four. Yeah. Later, he saw a machine. He was picked up by the wind, by a wind, and sucked into the time machine. Oh, dude, we're already. Yeah. Dude, time dragon. Travel. Dude, dragon time travel. Dungeon. No. What are the? Dragon, wait, are these clocks? Travel. Are th is this like some Dali shit right here? This <laughs> perplexes me. I don't know. I mean, this is clearly somebody being sucked into a time machine but as far as what's on this page i've looked at it a lot and i i really don't know this right side is just pure madness. now yeah this is yeah like what are we... dolly this is some uh david lynch horror confusion stuff going on i think i mean as a person who designs effects i think this makes a lot of sense we've got a lot of things that are recognizable as dragon like we got the spike thing and clocks so huh. I think I think this is like a second grader attempt at like effects animation. True, true. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's a lot of. Yeah, that's back all. And forth that's, that's what. It, that's what effects animation is. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think. Let's go to five. All right. Act three. Act. Th Act three, page five. Ha! Huh. He went through time in the machine and met Rhino. They played and stuff and became friends. Okay, so he's got a friend now. This is the last page. <laughs> oh, we're done now. <laughs> this is the end of time. <laughs> the end of time. So, act one, Blaze wakes up. Act two, time machine sucks him up. Act three, he makes a new friend and they uh, they just chill. Wow. Wait, where is Blaze in this drawing? Uh, who knows? I, I'm not sure. I assume this is Rhino over here saying ha. Is this, is this, uh... <laughs> Like a, a snitch from yes, Harry Potter? Yes, it is a, it is a snitch. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering if you'd get it right. I'm positive that's a snitch. Is this a disco ball? That is a disco ball. Okay. Disco balls are a theme in my work. They symbolize fun. Uh, okay. There are other... There's another work today that also has a disco ball in it when people are having a good time. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and turn this down loud. a little bit so we don't clip. Okay. I, almost saw, I almost saw a clipping going on. <laughs> we can't be clipping, guys. We've also got some, like, Thunderbolt chandeliers, I would... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, is this like Christmas ornaments or something? I... I... It looks like just Thunderbolts hanging from a ceiling. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm as lost as you are. Okay. I have zero memory of making this, or most of the things that we'll see in this video. I don't know what's on the ground, now, but I guess it's what whatever is involved in having does, a good time. I mean, to me, this kind of just feels like Christmas overall. Like, we've got toys on the ground, we've got tinsel, we've got disco ball, like... They do look trees. like bomb bags from Ocarina of Time. I don't know if you, you've played much N64. But I did not. I didn't actually, I never had a console system until I was like 15. All right. Yeah, I had to, I had to buy it myself. We've got a, uh, I don't know if we'll get to it today, but there is a, a, a Mario 64 story about the bomb bombs. Oh, I'm Maybe looking forward to that. that. There is a bomb in this too. Undoubtedly uh, influenced by Mario 64. So, okay, so that was time. Are we, is that, is, this is the whole book? That's, is, this is the entire book, yes. I mean, what a... Three acts. Yeah. Beginning, middle, and end. There was a dragon. He, he was, <laughs> he, he, he woke up, he spit fire, then he got sucked into a time machine, and then he met a rhinoceros, or he met someone named Rhino. I, uh, he looks like another monster, right? I mean, what, uh, this Actually, I really can't make out, like, what... <laughs> This is. He has a horn. Yeah, there's Definitely. a horn here, and there's a I hand. I think he's doing this kind of a like. He's raising up his his yeah. arms, and it's a little bit like Chernbog, like the end of um, Fantasia, a little bit. Oh man, mm. the guy that's that's in the volcano that's going wild. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
Perhaps. Yeah. I did like Fantasia a lot. There's actually something... I'm a, I'm a Fantasia boy. I love Fantasia. There's something yeah, in here fine that art. references Fantasia coming up real soon. Oh, actually. really? No way! Yeah. <laughs> Dude, type one in the comments if you're excited about <laughs> Fantasia. Okay, let's get to it. It's not as exciting as you Oh, think. no, I'm so, I'm so ready, we dude. We have another shitty story coming up. <laughs> oh, another story. All right, should Before we... the Fantasia reference. Should we click on the, the story? Sure, this one's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, by <laughs> the backwards... <laughs> yeah. Wait, is this on purpose or are you trying to be cute? No, I don't know how to spell. <laughs> I don't know how to spell at all, as you'll quickly find out. Okay, that's good. I can't spell either. I'm just, I'm just garbage. Craig. Like, you know, I'm, dude, I'm, here, let's just jump out for a second here. Um, like, I am the worst speller. Like, I can't do math. I can't, like, type straight. I, like, I never really learned how to type, and yet I'm obsessed with, like, yeah. mechanical keyboards. <laughs> You did ask me how to spell character designer while you were setting up those uh, those after effects Wait, things. So did we did we get it right? Here, you guys need to watch on screen right now. Did. There it is. I hope we got prop designer right. Oh, I didn't check your prop one. Yeah, oh, I would God. hope you could oh, spell God. prop right. <laughs> let's let's watch again. Uh, I can't I think, see. I think, I think it's, it's right. Good. I think it's good. Yeah, you and I actually are similar in that we both wanted to get into computer science and then dropped out with art as our second you choice did, dude computer you wanted to get in computer tell well, me more tell i me wanted more. to get into game design which yes. uc santa cruz had a game design program they, i assume they still have it and it was technically under the computer science umbrella and obviously to do game design you have to know how to code how to do math you have to take physics calculus and i immediately realized oh no i, I like the idea of making games but programming makes me want to just off myself so yeah i was so into computers but like i liked the idea of programs but i knew i could never do it and i would i would only like fake my way through all my programming classes in high school yeah it was i was such a hack it's it's really hard it yeah. is really hard to program i couldn't write the most basics of, of code because my there would always be grammatical and spelling errors in every single thing like i'm trying i'm gonna try to type hello world and uh, i've like misspelled hello i compare it to a race that you don't know the distance of you have no idea where the finish line is you're like maybe this will run this time and it'll work or maybe i'm eight hours away from solving this yeah and that drives me crazy with art it feels like well, I, can I can fudge this you know it'll all get to the end yeah somehow, yeah i can but... i can easily pinpoint where the issues are mm -hmm. a lot faster well, that makes sense. Yeah. Where I was going with this is I just wanted to tell you guys I'm terrible at typing and yet I invested $160 into my mechanical keyboard <laughs> so that I can just like hit all the wrong buttons constantly, but it feels nice. All right, let's get let's get back into uh, that's not the button I want to press. Let's get back into the <laughs> the story. <laughs> By Wilder, crass mess for everyone christmas for everyone <laughs> oh oh i thought aver one might be like a fantastical no, this is elf. supposed to say christmas for everyone so wow i have no idea how to spell there's oh. capital letters there's lowercase letters i have that problem i i type in like alternating caps sometimes and it's not on it's just by accident type that way yeah i have a problem where every like word is capitalized oh i've seen that yeah oh you've seen it from me no i've just seen i know that's a thing that some people do yeah because i'm so used to only writing like headlines oh and or or something so i end up just like capitalizing like the beginnings of words and like if i try to post something on the internet people are like what is wrong with you so i stick to just only posting drawings Hey, uh, I haven't noticed it in our Slack messages, so yeah, it's all good. All right, let's. Okay, so let's let's learn about Christmas for everyone. Uh, it. This is gonna be. I. Oh, do you I want me Christmas. to read it? Because it's pretty fucking hard to read. <laughs> Let me attempt it first. Okay. okay. It was Christmas. Bat. They. But they were missing something. A Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. There's definitely uh, a teacher or my mom is editing this and putting the... You can see I spelled they H-T-A. <laughs> Where is just W-R. <laughs> I mean, I like your shorthand, dude. That's This is fantastic. Yeah. Dude, I have to say, this is so much better than I was expecting. <laughs> I Like I said, I put all the good stuff at the beginning, so it might not be this level of entertainment for the whole time, but... It's okay. So what? Are, but what? And then we... look at the illustration. What is this? Is this? I believe this is an end table, and then this is a 
a bean bag with cherries? I, that's exactly what I think. This is apparently uh, an image of a house that doesn't have a Christmas tree. In yeah, it. we're we're lacking a Christmas tree. That part makes sense. It just has, I don't know, a jar on a desk and whatever the heck that is. Okay, I mean, I it, it it feels a little bit, you know, after the Grinch came and he's like, you know, he just the only thing he left was the nails and some hooks. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe maybe if I watched that movie again, I could get some hints as to what that red thing is. It has roses or cherries in it? I don't know. I'm gonna I go. like that there's an empty space on the right. Yeah, there was the absence of a Christmas tree. That's the part that makes sense to me. There's the abs. There's there's leftover it's area. The only thing that makes sense to me is the spot where I haven't drawn. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one here. Oh, we have a car. Mm -hmm. Rose and her mother went to got a Christmas tree, and they looked around. I think I read that right. Around everywhere. Oh, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that you did it faster than I did it the first time. I'm getting actually. used. To, I'm getting used to your syntax. Yeah. So and look, okay, this one makes a lot of sense. We got a car. They're driving on the left hand side of the road, but that's forgivable. <laughs> I hadn't noticed Maybe that. they're in the UK. <laughs> Um, got their headlights on. Where did you grow up? Where did where's uh, where where's I grew up very close to uh, to here. I grew up in Glendale. Wow, you didn't even have to move to no not no not to another state or anything. Where did you grow up? I don't even know. Oh, I'm from like the middle of Texas too. Real? Oh, yes. that I did know that actually. I had to, I had to um, yeah. I worked at a, as a caricature artist at a Sea World, and then I yes. worked in Austin doing ads and trying to save up because eventually I, I learned that animation took place in L.A. And I was, you know, mm. people had told me, oh, that's that's the only place in America you can get a, a job in animation. So. Yeah, I just I saved up as much money as possible and then just like drove here on a whim. Man, I have so much respect for, or I guess almost most people do that, and it blows my mind that there's well, this most, point where you have to be like, let's just go. I definitely most people are not from LA. Yeah. Now I'm not obviously. now I'm not jealous of of you or anything, but I do I do wonder what it is like to have to have grown up here and like known about that and then not had to like do that mm -hmm. because I don't really think about I don't really think about my moving as being like some kind of crazy thing it was it was crazy but it was a lot of fun and I really wanted to do it and I I'd planned it for so long yeah 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 I mean it was definitely very uh I always knew I had a place to stay if things went wrong you know what I mean I also we hadn't mentioned we should have mentioned on the first one that my parents are from uh or work in animation your parents work in animation yeah. oh my or, god or worked in animation so you've so you've kind of known about it tell, yeah tell me what your parents do uh, well, my parents used to work uh, at Disney, or I guess my dad still works at Disney, but in a different capacity. They met as animators at Disney. Literal animators, they were. Yes, they, they kind of uh, flip-flopped around to different jobs, as I guess happens. My mom ended up doing some writing. My dad ended up doing some directing, actually. But when they first met, they were both animators. What did they, what did they work on? I know they worked on Fox and the Hound. Wow. I know my mom worked on some chipmunk stuff. Um, and then the big one is uh, my dad wrote and directed Brave Little Toaster. You probably didn't know that. Yeah. Dude, and get out. That movie is insane. Yeah, it's a oh big... Oh, my God. We, we've got a big poster of it uh, in my childhood home. Um, it's my function. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just had to. That's my favorite. <laughs> every so, part of that. Every part of that movie is gold. Wow. I, I'm. I'm sure my dad will watch this and be be happy you said that. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. That that movie is crazy. I've seen it so many times. Um, I mean, it 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 really feels like not quite a Disney movie. Like, what is this story with that movie? Is it? It's some. I feel like Disney like sells the like owns the distribution, but it's like not actually like a Disney studio. You're absolutely right. Okay, yeah, that's almost what I nobody knows that, but that's that's uh, it was made somewhat independently, from what yeah. I understand, and then at the very end they got uh, you know they had to put it in theaters, and from what I understand, it was Disney kind of. That's what I suspected. I yeah. think I read it somewhere, and that's why I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think to like layman people, they just assume everything is Disney. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it would actually—it's—it's it's definitely hard to unearth that that is the case. 
But needless to say, uh, I was definitely surrounded by that sort of environment where my parents had me drawing a lot of the time. Um, I actually didn't consider doing art until I had exhausted that game design thing which is kind of funny you'd think i would be like oh this is a viable career because my parents do it but i actually thought it was kind of a, a weird crazy career choice until i started going for it oh really okay yeah, you would think that wouldn't be the case but it still cut, sort of felt and, that way to and me. and you didn't want to do art in game design you wanted to actually do the programming you know if i had stuck with it i'm sure i would have ended up doing the art because there's no way i was going to do the programming but oh you're too you're too good of an artist and too bad of a speller. I'm sure I would have been on group projects where there's yeah. some wizard and I would have just been like, you do that part, I'll just draw the, the, no. the explosions. You do, know you have any, do you have any game design skills left over from that time period? I, well, I definitely didn't learn basically anything about no. game design <laughs> because I couldn't get past the intro I was going to say we should make an Unreal game. I, I did do a little uh, fighting game test in Unity, just enough for the guy to run around and jump and have like little dust puffs come up every time he takes a step and that was really fun but i ran into a wall quickly and had to use tutorials for absolutely everything yeah but yeah. i i would still love to get involved in a, a game project i do game i do game stuff every once in a while i do game jams but i i i uh i exclusively say like i'm just the artist yeah and i do i'll do the 3d and i i know my way around the unreal engine and i can do a lot of simple texturing i don't know anything about 3d or i know a little bit about 3d but you wouldn't want to have me on a it's it's a it's a lot of troubleshooting which is like the only thing i'm good at besides art because <laughs> i use pcs it's a good thing to be good at dude it has saved my butt let's get back let's dude let's get back into <laughs> yeah the story story <laughs> left them on a, cl a cliffhanger, you guys on a cliffhanger. so they're looking for a christmas tree <laughs> all right should we go to the next page here yeah oh gosh and they found it. <laughs> wow. So look and look look at it, the Christmas tree in all all its majesty. Mm. <laughs> we got ornaments. I mean, this is better than the Charlie Brown one. This is an is this, asymmetrical. What is this? is this a violin? It looks like a ukulele or a violin. Is this a bat? No, no, no. This I is I don't a, know what that is. This is a purple branch. It must be. I love the idea that it just abruptly ends where there's a bit of a setup and then it's just, and then they found it. It's like, uh, you know, there's these hobbits, they have this ring, <laughs> you know, something they have to do. Why don't they just fly the they, eagles to Mordor? They figure out they have to go kill the ring, so they do it. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the end. Wow. I mean, I'm into it. Now, is this is this the end of the story? Are we, are we? This is the end of the story. Oh my God, so there's nothing left. They needed a Christmas tree and they got one <laughs> you know i just the thing about this is i feel like this is kind of like what real life is it's real life is so kind of predictable disappointing you need something you go to the store and you buy it and then it's that's the end of the story <laughs> like real life is about as exciting as your story it rarely plays out uh even if it gets interesting for a second it doesn't usually follow through with a the most interesting crescendo thing, yeah the most interesting thing i ever did is i sold everything i owned and moved to la and worked in animation and i'm still riding on that story <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else after that. I just and then I just worked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I love it, dude. Uh, okay, so what do you have next for us? Next, I have the thing that's relevant to Fantasia. It it, it probably doesn't um, at surface level have that much to comment on, if I'm honest. Oh, really? But uh, it is framed. My parents framed it <sighs> because apparently they said. I remember that they said, "Oh, it's his first like character design." Your and first it, it, it character can't design. have been because there's so much worse stuff that I must have done that before. But I do remember my parents making a big deal of this little drawing of a mushroom that you'll see. Let's get into it. Let's uh, get into it. I guess uh, the first official one. Maybe I. <laughs> I am so glad we saved the reveal until the end. <laughs> so this is directly inspired by the mushrooms from Fantasia, which is a great scene. Yeah, I remember watching that on uh, Laserdisc. We had a Laserdisc player back oh. in the day. All that Disney money, baby. Dude, that means you saw the highest resolution version available. That's not film. It, it broke very soon in my childhood and stopped working, but wow. uh, I was all about Fantasia, and specifically that scene. I remember I'm, thinking it was so serene and cool and the characters were nice. Dude, it's Tchaikovsky, uh, the Nutcracker. Oh, you know what? You know what's crazy about that is, um, 
Okay, so let's let's jump out here for a second. Okay, so Vantage is such an interesting film because culture has changed so much and like the way we think about classical music because of that movie. Mm. So Leopold Chikau, the, 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 the director who, who who's directing the audience comes up and says to the viewer, um, Tchaikovsky wrote this and it was planned for a play but you know it wasn't really well known and we've detached uh, all of the Christmas stuff from it the only thing left is the Nutcracker it like wasn't considered famous and and this oh, is really yes and then whoa that's that, nuts that was the thinking of this musical piece in the 30s mm-hmm. but now because Christmas is so commercialized the ball the ballet has come back all the imagery has come back even though people like it wasn't really considered to yeah. be a christmas thing this thing at the time because oh god it's christmas like we got to shove it down the christmas tubes like make this work like, it has to make money i mean it's the only ballet that i'm aware of yes it's the most famous ballet ever because it's like christmas shit now that, that is pretty wild i had no idea yeah and they didn't consider it like christmasy back then mm-hmm. it was just like well, it's good music, and it was planned for this play, but you know, no one really remembers the play. There's nothing special about it. There's nothing left with the Nutcracker. And the whole beginning of that movie is just the music and those little dancing uh, colors, right? Right, because what they're saying is like some music is written for music's sake. It doesn't mean anything, mm-hmm. and that's that's absolutely Bach. Bach wrote music because it did interesting things with like scales, which is essentially what part of Toccata and Fugue in D minor is. Mm. Um, Damn, dude, you know a lot about Fantasia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I also played piano for a long time. Oh, that's right. I remember. And, and like, I love that song, and I'm really into classical music. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, it's Toccata and Fugue in D minor is the opening, and it was kind of like they they understood that it was music for music's sake, and that's why Bach wrote it, which is why Bach wrote a lot of things. And it was um, Baroque, which means that like, let's 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 go back a little bit and talk about Baroque music, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, someone's gonna correct me in the comments, but like, <laughs> Baroque music sounds the way it does because it was played on a harpsichord, and a harpsichord, like, no matter how hard you press the button, you only get the same loud. Note. Yeah. Oh, you only get the same loudness. So if you want to make something sound more impressive, you have to add more things going on. I see. So it's like you start with simple, and then it like you get this crescendo with like more complicated maneuvers and then it comes down again and that's kind of like in that piece and i say if it ain't baroque don't fix it (laughs) okay i'm done i'm done i'm done and yeah yeah like you know walt disney he he hated abstract stuff but he understood that that's kind of what that piece was about Mm -hmm. and he and he was like this is the time to go abstract and we're this we're gonna step into this ordeal very slowly with things that are abstract and become like consolidated into something like real and then and then it becomes like and then it goes to the sorcerer's apprentice and other things like that but yeah i mean he wanted to make that movie because he was like i've made i've made snow white i've made pinocchio it's time to make fine art (laughs) like i am the world's greatest artist it's time to make something comes off as an extremely serious piece of work for sure and it was a total flop at the time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was too. It was it was like too high art for people. I imagine you would have a lot of walkouts because it is it is so slow at the beginning. Yeah, I tried rewatching it as an adult, and I was like, I didn't remember this just being a concert. <laughs> it's a concert. Yeah. Now the thing is, they tried they tried so hard to recover the costs um, because they you know they were late on it and they couldn't really like, distribute it well, and some of it was like scary to people, like especially the end with Chernabog mm-hmm. and. Um, some of it was like boring to people, especially the Takata and Fugue in D minor. So they would make cuts of it and they would cut out all that really great stuff. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until the 60s that people actually watched it and experienced it for its true art because they would like, there was an appreciation for stuff like that. Dang. Yeah. I had and, no idea. And so if you have the Laserdisc version or like the early VHS, you have the only real true copy that has everything that's like uncut. Wow. Yeah. Except for the Centaur scene because they cut that permanently. I wonder if my parents... Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's wonder, only available on YouTube. <laughs> I wonder if my parents still have uh, any of that Laserdisc stuff. So, yeah, I've got a, I've got like a torrent of 
like one of the VHSs. You know, I, I think I think if I think if you can, you can get the Blu-ray of it, it's probably like uncut. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, for a long time it was all chopped up and super short. Dang. Yeah. Well, I definitely had all of that in mind while I was creating <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> I, I was just 200 IQ. There's a lot of deep meaning in this this mushroom design. I still like it a lot. I I think the ones from Fantasia are are a million times better than this. But I mean, I could see this animated. It, it, it's there's at least some kind of design. The face is higher than lower. It's not in the middle, whereas most of the designs are just like <laughs> shapes, just stuff jabbed in there. Uh, so yeah. I for how it. early this was, this probably is uh, pretty decent for, for what I had done. I'm into it. Are you ready for the next one? The next one is uh, Monster Party. Oh, dude. I remember <laughs> this was probably one of the first things that I worked on. Like, even though stories were probably I was forced to do it at school, you know what I mean? But I remember doing this as December 2nd, 2000. Yeah. Wow. I, so I, I was born in 1994. So I would have been. Uh, oh, you're a young. Six, you're a, six years old. You're a young kid. A youngin. Yeah. Wait, how old is it? How are you? How old are you now? I'm 25. Wow, dude. 25 in October. I am. Uh, I'm an 88 model. Nice. I'm 30. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn 32 this year. Let's go. Wow. I've, I've, I feel like I have such a different worldview than you, <laughs> even though it's just, even though we're both 90s kids. Hey, I heart. mean, we both played WoW at the same time. It's That's just, true. I was a little, uh, you're, you're a little 11 tight. year old. And yeah. You were, you were an adult. You got to do all yeah, that. Yeah, but I played about the same level, I'm sure, because I was just terrible. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, my God. It, we shouldn't start talking about WoW too much this early, but I was, uh, nobody was worse than me at WoW. It took me like, over a year to hit 60 for sure i mean that's close to me i was about six or seven months yeah well if only we could have dueled <laughs> oh i did i'd be down i mean I'll, I'll duel you now dude all right i gotta log on to my shaman now so, okay so there tell is me about a disco monster ball in monster party by yes the way. yes oh look at that we've got some sort of chicken thing hanging from the ceiling <laughs> yeah i don't know i uh, like i said i remember doing this purposefully like i'm gonna do a piece of work you know it's gonna be there's gonna be monsters everywhere i had some kind of vision for it uh, which i can't say of most of the other stuff uh this came out of nowhere oh my and, god um yeah there's so many so many there's so many different characters. types of monsters we have uh what's this guy right here he gotta be an alien right yeah it's an alien with eyes like that with antenna has to be an alien is this some sort of like radio that's a boom box for a boom. sure yeah, yeah. yeah oh because everything in the 90s was those like circular boom boxes oh, yeah. so you can play your Britney this Spears albums. State of the state of the art. Yeah. It is floating. It's not like in perspective. If No, it's if not floating. If anybody it's was thinking that, it is floating. It's on a <laughs> box with legs. Oh yeah. It has Wait. hooves maybe even. It's, it is maybe it's a monster. Okay, okay. I I yeah. Wait, Wait I, we have uh that may maybe also a Medu- be a boom box. <laughs> what I would say Med- it was? Medusa boom box? Perhaps snakes up here? Is it music coming out? Is it, is it snakes? I think I see a spiked snail. Yeah, and I think he's coming out of a doorway on the left there. Oh, dude! Which is probably my favorite part of this whole thing. Is in the context of the whole thing, may, there is kind of a background just because of that one thing. Um, yeah, I like how how much of a a contrast of shapes there are in this. You'll see that go away as I get older, where I'm just like. Everything has to be Kingdom Hearts. Everything is just an emo guy with hair. Oh, but, yeah. But in my early years, it's like you want to, as somebody that does character, you want to play with shapes. You want to make a crazy guy, Wait, a round this, guy, a tall guy. This is amazing. That's a light. Uh, this is a light? Yeah. There's a lot of different lights in this, actually. That's definitely... So this is a disco. The whole place is dark. I was like, there need to be things to light it up with colorful light. There's also these little, um, can I take the mouse? Yeah, 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 yeah. There are these. Don't scroll, because oh, scrolling shit. will scroll. Well, I, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, it doesn't. How do you, how do you zoom out? Uh, you hold control. Okay. So I'll hold control well, for these you. These things are lights, um, for sure. I know they don't look like lights, but I distinctly remember thinking there's all these. Maybe they they flash or something. You know, yeah, they look like they little LED diodes. Two different colors, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this black This is and white. a light. This is a light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? There's lights everywhere. This is a light. Oh, dude, let's go back to that one. 
Uh, this is some very phallic looking like <laughs> this is some Rick and Morty shit right here. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to do a, you gotta do, a, a yeah. modern version of, of this. That would be great to put in the show. <laughs> this is a light. So I, I, I thought that was a squid. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It's maybe a, it is. It's a mid-century light. I think I think it's a... There's basically boomboxes, characters, and lights. Dude, I love it. And, of course, a disco ball. I, yeah, Monster Party. This uh, I remember that guy the, the dark dude with the like sort of elvis outfit on as being the the first character i drew and then i built everything else around it dude we, we have a... the first attempt on it on oh yes TV. yes yes <laughs> do we have like a grim reaper over yeah, here yeah there's a grim reaper with like diseased hands about to fuck shit up so i okay now there's wait. a tank wait where's the tank oh my god more of these tanks i drew that are in the the prop section <laughs> we have a prop section there's a couple pages of just props that oh have a my lot God. of tanks that all look exactly the same <laughs> oh can we go to that please if you, yeah yeah <laughs> totally. yeah i want to see some i mean oh wh what are we skipping okay. or is there anything really 20 good right and here? 21 um there i think we can skip these there's a lot of miscellaneous characters that okay so we should click on this one do. yeah 20 and 21 are both props Dude. <laughs> so there's a tank oh <laughs> this guns. is special yeah i, 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 I included this just just for you i knew you'd want to talk about there's the a lot to talk about with this because i just feel like this is like a classic like like middle like elementary school like boy like trope is just like gotta draw the page of war <laughs> yeah i i there's most sketchbook pages are kind of doodles of whatever you know maybe there's a tree a guy but this was just uh, guns and bombs <laughs> and tanks and i was like i deliberately did props which i was surprised by this is kind of like this is like that starship trooper like halo gun i love it i that's got to be inspired by perfect dark the game oh on, perfect dark uh, the james bond uh yes. like uh kind of uh, i mod i want to say i love perfect dark my brother and i played perfect dark all the time it was a an n64 game yeah the sequel to, to golden eye so okay okay ahead I, of its time so let's jump back explain to me perfect dark because when i when i i played golden eye and it has very specific multiplayer levels mm -hmm. and then i played perfect dark and it's like wait a second this is like the same multiplayer levels like what is the deal with that game they had a lot of levels from double or from golden eye i think but there were a lot of new, unique ones. There's a lot of guns. They had a lot of different types of like NPCs that you could play against in like a versus mode. Yeah, in a versus mode. So uh, it's, it's like the better multiplayer version of GoldenEye. It's really advanced. I wish a lot of the things uh, just, in that were in modern things where there would be bots that would only try to, you could disarm people and steal their weapons in that game. Wow. And they were, what were they called? Now tell me, tell me this is pacifist bots. They would just steal your weapons and run away. It was hilarious. Did it still have the same controls? Where like looking and running is the same thing? Because like had in janky controls, I don't think they were as bad. But it was still, if there was no auto aim, which my brother and I would always try to play without auto aim, it was oh, almost so unplayable. Hard. So hard. And on the N64 controller, which is garbage, it's uh, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, because I remember like Golden Eye basically like you could like tur like turning and moving forward were all part of the same thing and That's if you right. if you wanted to like stand still you had to like hold a button and then you could aim while standing still but then you're standing still and it, it's always trying to drag your cursor back to the middle of the screen which is the worst feature in anything i hate games that do that that's amazing yeah, magnets to to the middle. Oh, dude. Well, it's like console garbage. Yeah, <laughs> like that's that's probably just a rip off of one of the one of the perfect dark. Now games. I love I love your tank with camo right here. Oh, yeah. Or should I say like Mario shell? Yeah. The next page has more tanks that are just iterations on that that are almost identical. They just have different patterns on them and different numbers of treads. Now what, whatever. I feel like what this is missing is because that classic like the gun but also the lines to indicate that it's like shooting <laughs> what's what's up dude are the go guns to, not shooting <laughs> go, go to the okay. next one and see if there's any i don't okay, know if okay. there are, but i am a little disappointed no I oh dude we've got we've gun. got a submarine wait <laughs> what is this flying car submarine it could be a helicopter but if it is that's a, a one messed up helicopter dude check out yeah, these see, tanks <laughs> it's just the same tank twice but it just has like different numbers of wheels i don't know why i bothered drawing like four tanks that are all no, almost exactly the same. I mean, dude, I okay, the kind of people that are obsessed with tanks like 
I feel like a lot of tanks look similar, but they're like, no, this is a Russian T-55. This is a Rush. This is a T-6. This is a Panzer. And they all look kind of... I, I was not on that level. Yeah. This was probably based on that, like, tank flash game. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Well, I do agree that a lot of tanks look the same. Um, yeah, there's another one down there. <laughs> I can like I I love me some tanks, but like I can't get I can't get too excited about the difference. I mean I know the difference between a Sherman and a Panzer. I did play World of Tanks, and I know. Have you ever played that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I played that. That's yeah, good. I know those people that play that are obsessed. They're like they love the minute differences. It has a little angled armor, and you don't want to shoot that. You don't want to shoot that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Is this a hamburger? The top of a That's hamburger? That's probably a tank that got abandoned. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of tanks on this page, I'm telling you. Oh, dude, check out this one. This one has the air holes Ooh, for oh, yeah. uh, ventilation. Oh, yeah. Dude, That's I love like it. a turret. You got some blades. I don't dude. know what that Oh, and we got is. a fork? That's a pitchfork. A pitchfork, yeah, a pitchfork. The devil would have that. And this is a razor blade? So there's an axe on the right side that looks suspiciously similar to that. Oh, oh do you think that this is kind of like you tried to draw this axe and then you realize maybe it's the wrong shape? Yeah. I don't know which one came first, if I nailed it and then was like, let me do it again, or if I <laughs> fucked up and then did it right. But it may look like this is in perspective, but I guarantee it's not. That is a profile view of a weirdly shaped axe. <laughs> profile view are important. Okay, you know the thing about the thing about like a page, a page of like axes and guns, like... It's like very, it, I feel like it reads very immature, but let me tell you, I've seen like Da Vinci sketchbooks and he just has pages of like really? guns and, and weapons and shit. No, <laughs> they awesome. all did it. They all did that stuff where it's, 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 it's a, you have, it's a rite of passage. Nice. Yeah. Did the guns have the little lines coming out? <laughs> were they, were they blasting? I feel like it was like shaded in like the most like renaissance way like the vitruvian man kind of like texture mm. and like that was what made it so appealing because it kind of looks like one of those drawings of like his crazy helicopters i know i've seen that before well i love it dude all right what would you like to talk about next here there are some i guess you'd call them props there's some harry potter brooms on the next one um they all Whoa. have different prices dude this one would cut you oh yeah that's where do you the, sit uh, it has a name written on oh, it oh death Head? Well, it just says darkness up there. Yeah. No, oh, d but, dirk <laughs> ness. And then dirk. on on the the broom itself, there's something written that I was trying to decipher. Oh, oh. that's probably hang on. Dark I heart. I think that says dark heart. Let's oh, play with the, let's play with the windows. Like there we go. It's got to say dark heart, right? Yeah, I think it says. So I mean, you're gonna dark heart broom. Dude, this thing is gonna cut the heart right out of you. There's no real safe place to sit. I, I have to give credit to my brother, Ian. In this same notebook, uh, I think he had done this sort of thing where it's like a shop and here are the items that, that are sold at the shop and I just ripped it off. And I was like, I'm gonna have my broom shop and here's how much everything costs. Oh, so this is kind of like a stolen idea? Yes, yeah. the idea of the shop. I, the brooms, I believe, are are originals, but... Uh, so tell me, tell me this, um, like, we're looking at all this art and we're seeing it in a vacuum here because we haven't seen anything else from you before but like are all these ideas unique or are you just regurgitating stuff you've seen before i think nothing younger, i ever nothing the, i ever did was unique i think the younger i am the more original it is and then you'll see as i get to fourth fifth sixth grade it's only derivative it's only yeah yeah, yeah. it's once i saw naruto once i played kingdom hearts it was all over it's just garbage after that until uh sophomore year of college i would say <laughs> that is such a, that is such a tragedy and i feel like i mean i went through the same thing there's like original stuff and then once i become obsessed with i guess my my fandoms or whatever it just it takes a no it takes a creative nose i i was actually thinking about about this very thing while i was uh looking through all this stuff and i noticed that shift and it was almost depressing like why couldn't you have just kept doing original things but I almost feel like once you start to try, where you see something and you're like, I want to make something as cool as this. Yeah, uh, I think you've, you've been you've... inspired and we only know how to like mimic other things. Well, uh, how do I put it? It's like once you really start um, going for what we do now, where it's like, all right, I'll make a design, I'll improve it. You know what I mean? Once you start becoming methodical and not just ripping out crazy <laughs> You know, uh, what was the name of that dragon? 
once it's not just Shot blades going. firing blades. out, of, <laughs> you know what I mean? It becomes so much more difficult that maybe you do have to study these things for a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe everybody just has to uh, copy some some Naruto. You know what I mean? I mean, you got to copy the masters <laughs> at some point. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. You copy the masters. That's. I mean, if you got to copy Naruto, like I understand. <laughs> Or Sonic, or Kingdom Hearts. Tornado. Seven. I was I was not a Kingdom Hearts copier. I I mean I copied like web comics and shit. That's right. Actually, your uh, I was watching one of your earlier ones, and there was uh, I've got some, some Mega Tokyo called Mega. Dude, how did you just read my mind and know that that's what I was about to mention? Yeah, uh, Mega Tokyo. There was because I drew it, and I remember was, being obsessed with Mega there Tokyo was, for like uh, a girl in my class who had like physical copies of those that I had a huge crush on, and I was always is like mega tokyo that must be the coolest comic ever. <laughs> I, I like i don't think i ever actually read it because i didn't know how the fuck to you know come oh, across dude. it but mega i would tokyo. see those covers and be like that is where <laughs> dreams are mega tokyo oh dude i mean do you know anything about it i can pitch it to you right now I remember what you said on a, a previous episode. It's, that it was like it's, a love triangle it, video game referencey thing. It is made by a weeb for weebs, and he has this really scratchy anime drawing style because he was like previously an architect, mm -hmm. and he had a friend who was super into like actual like PC games. So at the beginning of it, there was all this influence with like gamer comics. So it was like slightly a penny arcade esque at first, mm -hmm. and the premise of the whole story is like. They want to get into E3 and they get really drunk, but they can't get into E3 because E3 is like exclusive at this point in time in 1999. So they like give up on their lives. They go to Japan and oh he my God. and he wakes <laughs> he wakes up on the plane and is like, oh crap, I'm on the plane to Japan. Well, this is a weeb's dream come true. So I'm not going to get a return home ticket. I'm just going to live in Japan <laughs> from now on. And like he goes and gets a job. Oh my God. He goes and gets a job at the like manga store. <laughs> this is what the author wishes his life yes. was, right? And then and then they he lives in an apartment above the manga store and his friend like overclocks computers and that's like his thing. And then like all these different girls like come to the manga store and he like talks to them and they become part of the storyline. And slowly like the gamer friend like leaves the picture and like more <laughs> girls, more like manga <laughs> girls like start replacing him. <laughs> And dude, I, I shit you not, it's it's kind of this like wish fulfillment of like, you know when you're a kid and you like you you heard stories of your friend's uncle who works at like Nintendo and there's all this cool cool stuff they have in Japan that they don't have in America yet. Uh, yeah, with Pokemon stuff, I remember that. It's like that. They have um there's a character who's actually a PS2 accessory named Ping, and she's like she's from a dating game. Oh man. And she's a character and like somehow they acquire her or they meet her and she's like a ps2 accessory and there's i don't want to say there's a love triangle but it's like it's <laughs> it's like suddenly there's this girl around who is like He's dating a <laughs> no they never they never date anyone the thing it's like it's it's pure the unrequited virgins. love yeah uh... yeah pure like nothing can ever happen because we're all too embarrassed about ourselves like bullshit and it it's like and and then like the story kind of progresses but then constantly there are these like interrupts where the artist doesn't do anything and he just like draws sad girls looking wistfully away in snow damn and there is some action there there's some i remember there was like a guy who got up on a sniper tower and he had like a special gun that was like made from sony and he like tries Dude, to shoot someone. Oh my god! And and it, it's all this like it's it's all this PS2 Sony shit you wish was real, but is not actually real. But it's a story about that and all these girls that like are kind of in this character's life that he wants to date, but not really. And they're all scared of each other. And there's all these little love triangles, and like nothing can ever happen, and no one ever can tell each other how they feel. And it just it just circles around into that, and it's all just scratchy anime. Jesus, that's the whole thing. That's like. Uh, oh, and that's then it's really rough. I'm happy I didn't make that. And then it's interrupted <laughs> constantly by kind of like wistful drawings of girls looking away. Maybe the shirt is coming off slightly and you can see like a bra strap. Man, and that informed your your college newspaper comic, right? <laughs> yeah, because I wanted it to be exactly yeah. like Mega Tokyo and Penny Arcade. Oof. Oh, and Mac Hall, don't forget that. 
What, what was that? Oh, there's another webcomic called Mac Hall, which was kind of like... Mac Hall. Wait, maybe you did mention that in the other episode. I, I mean, it's one of the lesser really known happened. ones, but it, like that was like another like two guys who play games kind of humor. And the only difference is that he, his drawings are more like paintings and he did like a lot of like Photoshop airbrush stuff. I mean, the art was actually pretty cool. <laughs> the really soft shading on everything. Yeah, I mean, I might be actually able to pull it up. I think when once you see it, like, let me pull it up here. Okay, this isn't as as airbrushy as I. It kind of looked imagined. like this, like it was actually made like there was an original pencil sketch, and then it was like sort of done with Photoshop. So everything was like a little bit glowy. Everything was like a little bit chibi and anime. Mm -hmm. I was really into this stuff. Let's see what else we got here. I'd like, say this is uh, better drawn than the other one, right? Yeah, it looked like this. This is like, yeah, it's like a little bit clerks, a little bit like anime. And then at some point, like the lines got lost. I don't want to pull. I, I'm afraid to click on these links, so I don't even yeah, know what's yeah. going to show up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then at some point, like, oh, it's not even working. Yeah, at some point, like, the lines were lost and became more of a painting. Oh, huh. So th this was part that's, of like uh, the culture. More sophisticated than I was expecting. Actually. Yeah, it was one of the better ones. I don't remember. I don't remember if it was funny. I think I just liked it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure uh, we all would have killed to be able to do this when we were first starting out. Yeah, you could do all this with the lasso tool, apparently, which is what he did. Um, and are you ready for this? There was kind of like a weird... It's called Demon Days. <laughs> uh, no, no, no that, that's like the name of this particular comic. The comic yeah, is called Mac No, but I mean, that, that's like the, the Gorillaz album. Oh, really? Which is very of that time period. Yeah, Demon Days is uh, the like... I don't know what year it came out, but... It's a great album. You oh my should, god. Uh, I'm surprised you don't know about Demon Days. This is 2005. It must have been around then, yeah. If yeah. not, then this guy's profit. Look at the size of this website. This is how big it is normally. <laughs> so small. Mm -hmm. I love this website design from this time because it's just, it's so straightforward. <laughs> and like, like it, at when I was looking at it at the time, this is how it looked. Mm. Like it went off the page. <laughs> Because this is how big it was designed. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to get off this. I, I did not know how to use the internet back back at this point. Or I did, but I only knew... Uh, I don't know. I are Homestar Runner, actually. Yo, Homestar Runner, we that's a legend. We were just discussing Homestar Runner that's a legend. In, the, in the office. I was all about Homestar Runner. Dude, rest in peace, Homestar Runner, because that's not going to work soon. There's got to be somebody who's... Don't you think there will be some kind of, like, Chrome add-on that just lets you play Flash stuff again or something like that? Well, Chrome is disabling it, but there might be a Chrome add-on that will let you do it. It can't be broke forever. You could just make a new, like, player, right? I, I hope guess you're so. right. You know, I don't I don't think it's going to disappear. I think there's going to be a way to do it. I know people are going to... Or you said people are frantically archiving all the old Flash stuff. If people don't know, Flash... Flash is going away from yeah. Chrome. Uh, at the end of this year or beginning of next year? Sometime in this year. Yeah. And it it's up to, it depends on what web, web browser you're using, but I think people are going to drop it at a certain point. Like right now, it's kind of difficult to use in Chrome. You actually have to like make sure it's enabled. Yeah, click it every time, yeah. Yeah. But rest in peace, Homestar Runner. All right, should we continue? Yeah, I, I think we've gotten about as much content out of the brooms as we will. There's the beginner brooms and the expert brooms. And they cost a certain amount. Yeah. Oh, wait, hang on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> See, I gotta be on. I gotta be on uh, the ones what else and twos. Do we have now. What do you uh, want? There is one environment. Uh, Which one is that? that? Or the next one? Twenty three. This 20 will be our last fun. Uh, Twenty three and me. Fun kid stuff before it gets a bit cringy. This is the only environment I think I that's in all of this, so I felt like I had to include it. So I love it. It's we got a tree. We've got. Um, There's a rainbow blast at the top of veggies that tree. coming off the tree. Yeah. A rainbow blast. This is a this is a whimsical world, and maybe Christmas lights or pumpkins. <laughs> but, uh, your guess is as good as mine. There, I, I do remember renting Donkey Kong 64 um, and playing it for like a week and having to return it to Blockbuster. And that may have inspired some of this. There were a lot of sort of tropical trees. There's a big bug on the left that is, is doing something. I just realized that that's Wait, up here? Is. On the very left, this green thing. No, down, down. 
that whole thing. Oh, this is a bug guy. <laughs> oh, this is a whole. <laughs> oh, it's kind of like a weird. Yeah. Things. Yeah, weird centipede pincer thing. Maybe there's not that much to analyze in this one, actually. I just wanted to include it because it's everything else is just a character. Now, this what's an environment? Now, is this kind of like one bug with lots of little trails coming off of it, or is this a, a swarm of Dude, buggies? I don't know. Okay. Honestly, I would have just said it's a bunch of purple marks, but. A swarm of bugs is much more interesting because I am I'm lost with those. Well, sometimes it's like, an umbrella. Why is there an umbrella? Well, a, a bug is riding down the umbrella. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Or a clover. Some kind of fruit, maybe. I'm into it. I think at this age, like we we like the act of drawing, we like the act of mark making, so we do something that we like, and then we just can't stop ourselves from like adding more. Mm -hmm. And so just more marks happen and they're unexplainable i mean what do you think of that theory i feel like i still do that now to a certain extent actually <laughs> just kind of make a mark because you like it and then yeah you just go over because it, it feels good in. especially with photoshop it's so so doable yeah yeah i mean that was my whole game i was gonna get into photoshop because i was like but then i can control z yeah i i feel like it's the biggest oh it's uh, the biggest artistic advancement and it's a huge upgrade in uh centuries just being able to undo yeah let's uh, let's move on to the okay so what so what are we moving on to now are we moving on to a different stage of your life yeah i think a couple years have passed um and i think you see more of the anime influence uh i'm trying much harder so we're taking a nosedive uh creatively but physically at this age you're trying harder to make something good I think so. Okay. Yeah. And what's the result of that? Uh, tell me, I mean, tell me where you are. Explain to me where you are in your life at this moment. So let's, let's assume I'm in third grade. I oh, you got, you're into anime at third grade. I was watching Toonami. I, I know that they had, uh, I, I didn't get into anime until I was like 14, 13 or 14. I, I honestly, I had a brief period where Toonami was showing, um, there was something I just found out called like Outlaw something. Outlaw Star. Outlaw That's Star. a classic. I That's used classic. to watch Outlaw Star. I've seen the 23rd episode, the episode they won't air on television. Really? I. That's when they go to the hot springs. I just realized like yesterday that that was the show that I watched. I have these vague memories of a dude, dude in a ship. Dude, Outlaw Star is like the is is like the watered down version of like Trigun meets Cowboy Bebop, and it's like very like kid safe. And it's like it's like nothing, almost nothing remarkable about it, dude. I'm sh I'm certain that someone is gonna like have a meltdown in the comments about that, but like, <laughs> I can't say there was some anything like super remarkable about it. But I've seen it all. Wow, I, I haven't seen it since uh, I was super young. So I or I also love DBZ. I was all about DBZ. Yeah, DBZ. Uh, like obsessed. I actually remember thinking, I wonder if I'll ever not watch Dragon Ball Z, and thinking like, no, I'm pretty sure I'll just always watch it. I mean, are you still watching it to this no, day? No, not at really. All. Not even the original Dragon Ball. Um, I I've never seen that chronologically. Even when I was little, I knew the schedule for DBZ, but yeah. Dragon Ball I would just happen upon. So I actually haven't seen that much of it. I know it's better. Better, or yeah, a lot of people can. I mean, I can't better. attest to anything. I've I've attempted to watch Dragon Ball. And I made it like four episodes in before I gave up. It, it's ridiculous. I to I tried rewatching DBZ a couple years ago, and it's there's so much filler. Uh, it's so ridiculous. I, I heard he's just like powering up for many episodes. All anime is just so melodramatic, except for like Ghibli and stuff. It's just. I think that's the part of it that keeps me from really being an anime guy is it's just like, oh my God, this is just. Yeah, well, it, it, you feel the budget in every cut. You feel the boarding has a particular way about it where it's like, oh, they're not going to like cut to someone talking now They're because like it'd be a lot cheaper if they just did five more minutes of dialogue over backgrounds. Like, don't show it from this angle. I mean, I don't, I don't mean any offense to like anime viewers, but like to me, when I watch it, it feels like that. Even though I like the art and stuff, it's there's a very particular way that they board things and this, the narrative structure. It's like a mess. Yeah, certainly. Uh, the stuff they were showing in early 2000s was definitely that way. Yeah. So the Let's... the next thing we're gonna get into is a story that. Uh, my friends, I, I, I haven't showed the, the actual words to the story because it's like really long, 
but it's about hamsters that are ninjas. Is it 24.jpg? Yes. All right. That's the first one. This is the character design of, of Bullseye. Here we go. We're going to jump yeah. right So in. from here on, I just realized, oh, if you have your hair kind of brushed down, you're a cool guy. <laughs> so it's just from here on out, only draw cool guys. You only know? draw cool guys. This, He's he, got two scythes. He's he got a... the Naruto thing. So this is the beginning of the end, right? Oh, dude. Once this shows up in the sketchbook, you're done. Oh, dude. Uh, okay. Bullseye was... has one eye covered. The other one probably has that, like... The, yeah, he's the like red Naruto eye, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Now were you a true weeb? Did you wear the Naruto thing at your high school? Uh no, no. Once I was in actually I had a falling out with anime by the time I was probably in about sixth grade, where wow. I was like, this shit is just like this shit's for kids, you know what I mean? That's what the thought I had. And well, some anime is for kids, some anime is not. <laughs> yeah, I ended up actually like really disliking it, except for all the Miyazaki stuff. I always loved those. Mm -hmm. But uh, like Naruto was my go-to for being like, oh, this is like an edgy, nerdy kid. You'd like Naruto, you know what I mean? But at this point, I loved it. Um, I, 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 totally I mean, I'll take it back. But... My, my friends love Naruto all the way into like ninth, 10th grade, I want to say. So, I mean, I feel like you're ahead of the curve. I mean, I think I, I disliked it a little bit too much, if I'm honest. I think coming back now, I'm, I'm watching it's... more of it and being like, you know, if you can appreciate it for what it is, then you can, then that's how you can like truly like it. Yeah. But if you're, if you're appreciating it because you're seeing a lot, you're seeing more into it than what it actually is. And then you've got like a, I think your expectations are really weird. I was yeah. also seeing stuff that was marketed towards children, and I, I now realize that a lot of the the best stuff I just wasn't aware of. You know, I was just watching all the crap. Yeah. Um, so yeah. read read this to me. Bullseye, uh, a skilled ninja who spends most of his time training or playing with Wolf. He is more skilled than Wolf and one rank higher, but still his friend. And then we've got so, a drawing of him, like, um, way down time. here. Yeah. Is he a hamster or a cat? I think they're hamsters. Hamtaro was a big thing at the yeah, time. Yeah, I can see and that. My best friend was very into Hamtaro, as was I. That's, and wh that's we what were, this is. We were like, what if, what if Ninja hamster. there was Hamtaro plus Naruto, and what if we all collabed Ham on a story? Hamtaro? Wait, you don't know what to, Hamtaro is? Wait, is Hamtaro a thing? Hamtaro, yeah, Ham. Oh no, you thought I was mashing up the names. No, Hamtaro oh, was I know like it, I know anime about hamsters. I have seen. Oh wait, okay. So I'm think. Okay, so there's both Hamtaro, but then you've also essentially created a mash of Hamtaro and Naruto, which would be Hamtaruto. <laughs> I don't remember what this what the title was. But okay. We 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 were all in on this for a couple weeks. We were like writing, <laughs> and we were like, "What's gonna happen in the next chapter?" And I, I was doing all the drawings. Wait, did someone else write this? I think so. All the handwriting is my own, but I I know that we were like a collective. I guess I just took creative charge, and I was like, "I have final say." Dude, I could not work creatively with my friends at this time. I mean, it didn't produce anything good. I don't know if it was. No, this is I don't gold. Know if you this is gold. <laughs> I didn't include the the actual text because it's just pages and pages but um oh, i have the character does he have a friend with a shotgun and is, air horns yeah the, er, <laughs> those are guns oh they're not <laughs> <laughs> he fights using the air horns instead of the shotgun wait does he have does he have grenades that you then erased I, it looks like it. I actually didn't didn't notice that when I was looking through this. These are just some sketches. Okay, we like, have a plan for a helmet. Accident. We have a plan um, for a helmet right here. Yeah, what's what's on the... There might be a, a full illustration okay. on the next page, actually. Oh, no, this is just another... Oh, dude. So this is a samurai hamster. In the story, it's the classic beginning of any kind of like uh, Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan movie where they're training at the dojo. Yes. And then the samurai show up, and they did, they kill everyone except for our main characters, and then they have to avenge their dojo. Wait, and is this that is a... one of the samurai that comes? And oh, that's kills wait, everyone. That's a, oh, that's a trope. Yeah. Okay, that's yes. a trope. That's like okay, we've got the character in their natural habitat. They're just doing their thing, but then something terrible happens. Their village is raised, and yeah. they have to avenge their village. Yeah, I I, I ripped that for this this story. That's, I basically just wrote like, I mean, that's half like of, that's half pages. of all vanilla wow quests right there. <laughs> yeah. And the other half is corruption. There, there was some Jackie Chan movie in particular. I was obsessed with Jackie Chan. My mom and I were both obsessed with Jackie Chan for a couple of years. And there was one in particular where that happened. And I was like, 
I know I've seen it. I've like seen that. Samurai X, and I feel like that's what the plot is. I've no. never seen Samurai X. Okay, I don't remember anything about Samurai X, except for, for that there was a, uh, you know, it was one of those things where they used real fire instead of animation fire. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's what I remember about it. So yeah, this guy's a samurai. He's got that big cloud sword. Oh yeah, that's important. I didn't play Final Fantasy VII. That's but not I a kill saw, I saw a cloud. <laughs> no, I saw a cloud in uh, in uh, Kingdom Hearts. He's one of the one so. Of the so was your introduction to Cloud um, before Final Fantasy VII? So you saw him from? Uh, or you? I saw him in in Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. You have to go to. It's, he's in the Hercules stage. You're fighting like a gladiator, and he's yeah. like the boss of that. Uh, I thought you fight Hades. That's the boss. Well, I feel like there's a bunch be, of arena things. He's not the final boss, so it might be no. Actually, there's. A, it's really a important. Three-headed dog. Yeah. is the boss of the first one. Severus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's really important that you don't get any of this wrong because the internet <laughs> really cares Kingdom about Kingdom Hearts, Hearts. Kingdom Hearts Two, I think you fought the the guy. I or, or you fought a uh, Hades in that one. I think I might be wrong, but I'm. Where do you sure. fight Sephiroth? Sephiroth is in Kingdom Hearts Two, and he's an optional boss. Optional. Yeah, he's the oh hardest God. one in the game, though. Okay, that's good. I that's important. Need him. The one winged angel. Yeah. All right, let's jump back over to 27. And then there's the, these are some illustrations of. Uh, oh, and we have all the company. The, uh, you we know. have all the hamsters fighting. Yeah. A okay, larger so the, hamster. You can see the guy on the left there. That's the bullseye. Yes, yes, I see the yeah, headband. He's attacking him using the thing. The, the whatever. The scythes. Who knows what they're fighting? I, I. Uh, I mean, this character is pretty interesting. It's like a dog. I would alligator. say it looks like a hamster if there weren't. Hamster. If I didn't know that they were our hamsters. We have a uh, <laughs> what is this thing called? A uvula. A uvula. <laughs> Always got to put the uvula in there. Do you still draw the uvula to this day? Um, not in Rick and Morty stuff, but I would say I try really? to get a uvula in there if there's a mm -hmm. big scream going on. Mm -hmm. Now it's really important that you say uvula. Oh my God, and there's a little carrot in the bottom. Wait, I never stood a chance. That's oh. just a, a funny. Is this a side funny character that just didn't thing. make it? Everything becomes random at this stage, where random is funny. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I watched Invader Zim as well. Oh, yeah. I was... Yeah. Monkey cheese, the other Neo random Pets words. forums really rewarded randomness, for oh, sure. Dude. I was so into Neopets. That, actually, that girl I had a crush on was also into Neopets. And, so, oh, I want to hear what happened God. with this girl. So she was reading Megatokyo. You tried to, like, talk to her about it. And no, I... Her, I don't remember when we actually became friends, but she was the only girl that was actually into video games. And I think just every dude in the class had a crush Oh, absolutely. On her. That's that girl yeah. at the time. Like, oh my God, you like the same things that I like. Like, oh, I just, my heart. <laughs> yeah, and I just started playing Neopets because she was like, I was like, do you have a computer? And she was like, yeah, I play Neopets. And I was like, uh, okay, I'll just get obsessed with Neopets for like four years now. Um, <laughs> Did you know her for four years? Yeah, or... Were you just fawning over her for four years? Six. Yeah, totally. Okay. No, uh, I, second to six. I'm not judging because we've all done the same thing. <laughs> second grade to sixth grade, I want to say. And then she left and I saw her at a birthday party and was like, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to say say something. And she was just talking to somebody else and walked right past. And oh, I you was didn't like, say the thing. damn, this is pretty crushing. Is that? No, I tried to, but she was like already having a conversation and was like, hang on, I'm doing something right now. And I, that... Is that when you knew it was moment. no longer worth pursuing? Uh, or did absolutely. You or did you she try went to out. a different school also, so I was like, this is my one chance to see her at this birthday party, because everyone will be there. She'll, she'll be there. Oh, and, uh, that's, dude. So, yeah, rip. I have to say, I have the same story with just different variable, with not different, different nouns. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, you like the one girl, and then they go to a different school, and then, like, there's the party, and you want to see them, and they don't notice you you think it's going to be the biggest event of your life yes it's just this little it's the uh, uh, yeah it's it's classic now why can't we, we should pull on that for our narratives <laughs> i okay so i because that could that's something Ham, hamsters <laughs> in naruto we've seen i i had i don't have the drawing that you might be alluding to I, I told you about there was a drawing I did of that girl. <gasps> yeah, but I don't. I couldn't find it. Oh, I looked all no. over my parents' house, and I may have thrown out that. How did How did you do it? Did you like Did you like lovingly look at a picture on like a cell phone yeah, and like try well, to I, do I it? I had a birthday at medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> and we took the like novelty photo where everyone's holding swords and wearing the the paper crowns. 
Wow. And I just had that like in my house. My parents put it up like, remember your birthday? And remember your like, birthday? Yes. It's a photo of that girl. I'll, and she's I'll, in it. I'll draw, I'll draw her. Wow. And I remember spending forever on it. The first time I'd probably try to actually do real realism and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. get all the details right. Because you don't want to draw her wrong. No. Know? And um, I remember taking forever. And I remember my mom finding that sketch oh. and sit. Hi, and then mom, she had questions then she had questions she was like why did you draw this girl no no she was like that's a great portrait that you did and i was like uh <laughs> i don't know i don't know what who that you mean <laughs> and she could tell that i was very embarrassed and later she bought me those uh pokey sticks as a uh, pocky what, whatever they're called you you <laughs> miss you cannot ones. mispronounce pocky <laughs> oh, shit sorry we have them in the comment. office uh I'm oh, we do uh, occasionally, yeah, someone brings them in. I mean, we got weeds at the office. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say who. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wish I could find that. I, I, I was really trying because I thought this will be, this I mean, will you, be the, a great talking point. You absolutely shouldn't feel embarrassed about it. We've all done it. <laughs> I, might, I might have something worse, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> um, you know how, like, you choose, like, your favorite female characters in an anime and that becomes like your thing. I sure. can't. I can't say like I was like. I can't say I had like, on, like purposely had done that, but I was really <laughs> fixated on a couple characters from Evangelion, uh -huh. and I would I drew life size versions of them. What? Yes, life size versions. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Yes. That's incredible. So that's just technically incredible. It, like it, it was a technical feat. I've never feat. done anything close to a life size drawing of someone. Yes, it was a technical feat. It took a long time. I had now. I didn't like draw it completely from scratch. I had either very large JPEGs or posters and a lot of reference. Wow. And I was able to either trace parts of things from certain posters and trace parts of things from certain JPEGs on my screen. Like I would put the graph paper up to like the screen and like get the feel wow. right. Yeah, and then I created a life-size version of not one, but two different characters <laughs> from Evangelion. That's amazing. Yeah, and then-, oh. and then Do you have these? What 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 happened to them? Oh, I don't know. I think I threw them away at some point. Because at some point I realized what I had done, <laughs> and they're gone now. But okay. <laughs> but for a time I was naive. Are you ready for Are you ready for that? What I did next? What? I wanted them to be stand up cutouts, uh -huh. like how you would with cardboard cutouts. But I didn't. They weren't on cardboard. They were on graph paper. So I made a Connects armature, <laughs> and. They stood in my room. That's so fitting somehow. And I showed my mom. I don't, like, I think she kind of was like, wow, that's great. Dude. And then they were, they were in my room. And then one was, one was like, like across from my bed. So I'd wake, I could wake up and look at it. Oh my God. And I know how bad that looks, but I have to say, like, it was just the most, in my head at the time, it was the most sincere, like, I just love this show Dude, and like I is, love these characters. That is so funny. And man. I couldn't explain it. You uh if there are any pictures anywhere, you I have might have to, a picture somewhere. Dude, that's gold for, for for this this kind of vlog in particular. I think this man I'm gonna do a follow up episode to this and we're gonna I'm gonna expose I know I have a picture of it somewhere. I don't wanna go through digging around my computer because I don't I don't know what's gonna come up. Mm -hmm. But I got one. Um now are you ready for are you ready for the fall the fallout or like how it like how it went down how so my friends loved it oh really because they were on my level they were like really sincere about wow. this and they wanted versions of it oh man yes so i did i drew more and i would trace like so I did, I, here's who I did. I did Ray and I did Mia Sato. I don't know them by name. That's okay. That's okay. We don't need to, they're bad. <laughs> I mean, the, I mean, it's like. I know Evangelion is awesome, but. I, I mean, I know. mean, those characters are great, but I think like, it's like such a trope to like, want to draw Ray. I, I can't explain it. She's just like this Does character. Does she have the red hair? No, that's Asuka. She, okay. Ray is like a character who doesn't say much. She has like a very like mysterious past. Like she never speaks. So you oh, kind yeah. of end up projecting like what you want on her. So it's it's basically like whatever you want her to be. And then Miyasato is like the older aunt who 
drinks and is like I remember her. Yeah, yeah. she's actually funny. Like Ray's not seen the the movie version. Yeah. Yes. So they all wanted like versions of like Ray or something like that. So then I would trace it and shade it. And it would take a really long time yeah. to shade because it's life size. Yeah, that would take forever. Yeah, and then I would and then I would give it to them for their birthdays. And so two I believe three copies were made and given to my friends. That's amazing. Yeah. Damn. Deeply embarrassed about it, but also <laughs> not. It's a great story. Thank you. I'm so happy that you've uh, you've brought this up. Damn. I mean, I'm just saying. How I many could... people have you told this? Uh, I think only my mom and my <laughs> friends at that time know about this. <laughs> this is an exclusive. Yeah, you're an exclusive. Damn, I mean, dude. I'm not ashamed. No, I am deeply ashamed. <laughs> I'm deeply ashamed of the true weeb I used to be, because I know exactly what it looks like, but I have to tell you, I just, it was so earnest. <laughs> I mean, that's what the show exists for. It's, it's, it's turning embarrassment into content. <laughs> yeah, I want to humiliate myself for your enjoyment. <laughs> if you're still watching at this point, we're now an hour and 25 minutes in, you need to comment. Oh man, this is already the longest episode, huh? Uh, I think we did an hour and 30 okay. before. Wh what should they comment if they're still watching? Damn, Brent. <laughs> damn <laughs> well i know here's what i know is gonna, here's what's gonna happen my mom is gonna watch this because she actually watches the entire thing and then she's gonna comment and then she's gonna say something about how she remembers this and then it's gonna be very like nostalgic for her oh, and then man. we're gonna and then we're gonna get a really long comment oh, <laughs> and it's gonna be like the number one i hope so i know that's gonna happen <laughs> So, has she done that on the past ones? She does it on everyone. Really? Yeah. Oh wow, I gotta check those. She comments. does it on every band video. And she does it on all my stuff. Really? No, I. Think, Are they always top comment? Um, she's one of the first people to comment. Nice. Because she watches everything I do. I gotta, I gotta scroll through those videos and, and find your mom. Oh, she's that's there. so wholesome. So she's very supportive. Oh, she's extremely nice. supportive. Yeah, I've, I've heard my parents as well. That's good. You need a supportive parents. I've heard that um, she, they have a Chromecast, right? Yeah. So they they have it to their their huge TV above the fireplace, and they they literally put this on and watch the entire thing. Oh man! Start to stop. Love you guys. Hey mom. <laughs> okay. All right. Now it is getting it is getting on the longer side. So where should we where should we look at now? So where's the juice? Where's the where's the good stuff? So I think after this, I just have a bunch of like awful anime characters in a row oh dude we don't i need to spend a lot of time on but i mean this dude, is where i think we've reached the, the deepest valley we've got we we've hit. got the one wing that's from kingdom hearts that's what uh the edgiest guy i don't remember his name but he's got that crazy no no is there another he's got wing? gray hair also <sighs> wait are there more gray-haired one-winged angels than just oh yeah wait there are uh what's his name i should know this actually oh my god it's sora and uh oh sora you've i've turned i've gone riku. to the water is it riku's from final fantasy riku's from final fantasy i know yeah. i know that one because i had 10 and 10 too i feel ashamed but it's that dude's wing from the end of the first uh first one the comments i've he's got a the people in the comments know who this is this thing from naruto mm -hmm. he's got like a flaming fist from who knows what everything from this point on is just plagiarized you already know what this is what's now what's what's going on right here in the in the middle is this like a chain of bullets or uh no those are those uh kunai what is a kunai Damn, you don't know what you watch anime. You don't want to. No, like I'm not a, a true weeb. It's like a different version of uh, the throwing it's dagger. The same sort of thing as like a shuriken, but yeah, it's more of a dagger version. Ah, uh, okay. They'll, they'll use them as daggers, but also they'll throw them. Wow. It was a big thing in Naruto for sure. Okay. Um, and yeah, this hair is just gonna be a theme. Yeah, we've got the greased um, hair playing straight next, down. The like, next four covered. images I just put in a row because they're all. Oh yeah, we got the guy like he's like looking at you. Do you see what I mean about we the, the fangs? downhill where it, the, before the shapes were imaginative? They no, were yeah, everything was different, and now it's just like no, this is now it's it angst, from now pure on. Pure angsty. We've got practicing fangs, practicing hair, practicing hair, practicing eyes, like hair covering eyes. Ninja, ninja is a big theme in everything. I mean, yeah, we've got the guy from Final Fantasy VIII, I think, who I also saw. There's some puppies. Oh, shots. there's some puppies. <laughs> don't for, don't forget your don't forget your creative roots here. Yeah, I just included that because there's another edgy guy. 
What's uh, down not here? Not too much. He's to got a big sword. It's like the gun blade thing from. Oh uh, yeah, a gun that shoots blades. No, it's a gun and a sword. Yeah, I never played Final Fantasy VIII, but the main character has that. But he Barrett. was he was a boss. No, Barrett is from. No, Barrett's from. I, I don't know what his name is, but Barrett. Yeah, Barrett's from Seven. Um, but you fought this guy very early in uh in uh, Kingdom Hearts, so that's where I got this from. He's sitting on like a throne. That's important. So those are just some edgy drawings. We have a Yu-Gi-Oh. Were you into Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu -Oh? Yeah. Everyone. Whoa! Look at these eyes. Yeah. This one's. This one sucks. So are you? This is also copied from like a specific photo, and I just copied it so poorly. Okay. So <laughs> I was gonna say, are you attempting to draw it like how you see it, and you're just failing, or is this kind I of? I must like... be. I must be. Okay. I. I honestly. There's a couple times where I've really nailed like observational drawing, but it always takes me super long. I'm still very bad at observational figure drawing and stuff. Okay. And uh, this is definitely a test or a testament to how low my natural skill at observational drawing That's is. That's amazing because I'm I'm on the other side of the spectrum is because I would like meticulously look at the drawing and then make like a perfect copy of it mm -hmm. and. Like my ability to create or like be imaginative or like kind of draw from life is just like way down here. But the ability to just straight up rip off something is like way up here. Yeah, I, I think I'm 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 pretty good at drawing from imagination, like in perspective and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But the moment I try to copy or I'll use reference, but just yeah. it has to be loose because if I try to copy, it'll just be it'll be off. That's amazing. So yeah. And then uh, the other character in Yu-Gi-Oh! Siba? Siba. Siba? <laughs> Anyone who actually watched you oh, will be yeah, don't cracking for, up really hard because his real name is shaded eyes. His real name is Kaiba, and it is not spelled like that. <laughs> oh, oh, so you're attempting to spell it? It's probably K A I B A or K Y B A. Maybe it's not C I B A. What's with the brick texture in the back? So this is from my Harry Potter sketchbook, which also the other thing was in. It's like a sketchbook that looks like you bought it in like. Harry Potter world. Oh, does it already come pre-bricked? Yep. It's got the brick in the back. It's got those uh, those stars. It has little notes written in it as if it's someone else's diary from the oh, Harry Potter oh, world. Oh, so the stars Look and the at brick. that hand. Oh my god. I'm into that. Jeez. I'm hey, not into that. <laughs> I mean, okay, the thing about this hand is like, it took me a long time to stop drawing hands like this. I was doing hands like this until I was like 24. I probably was too, honestly. Yeah, I the mean, the other thing is that I've still, I've, I've got some hands that still look like this, to be honest, because it's, it's one of those like. <laughs> Sometimes the angle is just screwed up. You need to stylize it, and it, yeah, I don't know. Oh, so I think I feel like we should dive in on this hand a bit because it's got all the things that, um, it's got all the classic hand tropes. There's only one joint. It's right here at the end, and you've done kind of like a, you've done a style of hand where it's like you. Like this is a trope, like you put your fingers together and then there's the one doing this. So it's yeah. kind of like, this is a repeated drawing you see often, like you get good at certain poses. And then the fingers kind of like get big at the end, which is like something you learn very on. That's how you like describe a finger. Mm. And then it's like got the perfect like wrist, like area and it. And it's kind of like a, it's almost like a penny arcade, like Stephen Hill silver, like animation hand, but like you didn't learn what that looked like it's not wrapping around the thing either oh i thought he was kind of just doing i thought he was just kind of doing he's this. definitely trying to hold it somehow but yeah i mean oof. i mean dude i can't i can't judge i mean i've, I've turned in stuff <laughs> i mean i was young yeah. but geez how, how young are you right now what's young what's oh, a youngin man like at most fourth grade which would have been uh i mean i wasn't drawing hands in fourth, fourth grade nine maybe yeah but this is copied also from a, a specific oh image. obviously loosely right. copied but um i guarantee you there's an image probably on the back of a ps1 Yu-Gi-Oh disc that looks just I like i don't it. know what the fuck this shit is <laughs> <laughs> oh dude we have abs yeah abs the swords God of, just these gods I don't know. There's the the shadow god, the shadow god, the god of combat, the love goddess. Oh, we got god a god of, of water. Thunder. She just looks like a regular person, but everyone else is insane. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I don't have a story about this. I just happened to I erased 
the other wing. So he oh, dead. dude, there was an attempt. There was, there was, um, what do you call it? Sym symmetry. And then you're like, no, he has to be a fallen angel. Yeah. Everything has to be a fallen angel. I'm so <laughs> obsessed with the darkness. Yeah. I can't get over. I can't get over the the Christian imagery because I learned it from an anime. Oh yeah. This is like. Okay, so that's what I really was hanging on to about Evangelion for like so long because I had I'd grown up religious, I went to church, I knew about all this stuff, and then I saw it in Evangelion re represented like more twisted and evil and they used the same like, they, they talked about the same themes and I just couldn't get over like the imagery and like the metaphors and I thought there was something really deep to it and I like I would just, I would, I would stay awake for hours just like, what does this mean? Wow, it's so dark, it's so, uh -huh. it's so intriguing, it's so mysterious because it's got these like biblical names but it's it's actually not important to the story at all it, it literally doesn't matter it's just gobbledygook huh uh, you know final fantasy 10 had that also the the main boss is named sin sin um yeah there's a lot of religious stuff in it i think a lot of japanese stuff has that, that sort of stuff well from my understanding you know our culture kind of like looks at japanese things and it's like it's all mysterious and magical and it's like oh it's like i got this tattoo in japanese it means like peace uh -huh. and and like we're super into like the mysticism of like the east and like for them it's the same way they look at christianity and they're like wow it's so oh bonkers. i see what she means so like, they're they're like they look at that and i, I wow. think that's what i think that's what's going on i mean they certainly like kind of romanticize because it's so foreign uh, to them like white people in that also the main character is just such a like in final fantasy 10 is just this like yeah that's part of the aesthetic california is, boy yeah they want that guy yeah the character the, huh. the skin tones in the anime are super white it's yeah blonde <laughs> spiky hair or i guess spiky hair yeah. nobody has spiky hair naturally <laughs> oh i i've never thought of that before. i did that makes a lot of sense let me tell you when i didn't wash my hair for like months <laughs> And then put and then put and then I put the gel you in. You looked like a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh back there. <laughs> well, I thought I looked like that. Yeah, I love it, yeah, dude. We don't need to <laughs> to linger on this weird ass goddess thing. There, honestly, the rest of these are don't have. Many oh, stories. dude, there's a dragon here. Yeah. <laughs> this was I, or actually, this one kind of has a story. I remember on Neopets, you could have like your custom page where you could put HTML. And it oh, was like yeah. a personal thing. Some people would do drawings of their Neopets and put them there. I remember seeing a couple that actually inspired me where I was like, this person's doing like realistic looking drawings of Neopets. That's crazy. Wow. And one of those people had uh, a tutorial on how to draw dragons. And oh, it was did very you follow? formulaic. This is certainly following it. It was like, draw the shape of the body and then add the legs. And then, you know, this don't is forget how the you two tails. Things. Like, the only variation you would do is like the number of things that are coming out here or oh you know, yeah what yeah style of thing you're doing and i was like so did all the did all the drawings kind of end up the same like he just had variations of like things on the wings yeah yeah i mean i guess dragons are kind of that way there no dude there's this. wibrins there's wormkins <laughs> there's the four-legged ones there's the two-legged ones oh, let me tell you about dragons bro okay. <laughs> no go ahead go ahead yeah or i mean i see why they're they have those assumptions because i i don't know i kind of get it dragons are they have to have a certain they have to have the wings they have to have the tail they have to have scales or whatever mm -hmm. but um yeah i drew i drew lots of dragons in my uh you know my vocab assignments using this formula and uh oh so you were turning these in for school stuff oh no i just like doodling oh, oh you uh, said i thought you said like vocabulary assignments Oh yeah, I was. I mean, I I think I maybe I would turn them in and just be like, I don't fucking care if the teachers. Use. <laughs> but uh, but it's not like I, I had art assignments in school where I would turn in dragons, you know. I would. There was always like an option. Well, not there always. There occasionally there was an option to draw something, and I'd be like, I'm really? Yeah, I'm not writing. Oh, I'm nice. drawing something. I definitely did that in high school, where maybe for it's like you can do a book report, or you can do a drawing of something that happened, and I would always be like, free. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Before I was even interested in art, it was like, I can just cheat using having some drawing ability. <laughs> I did, uh, we read Beowulf in high school. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you, I turned in some World of Warcraft drawings based on Beowulf. Nice. <laughs> I was so into that story because I was just like, oh my god, it's, 
there's just a store. He already has swords. There's armor. <laughs> there's armor. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, there's dragon. a dragon in that too, huh? Thanks. Yeah, or Grendel or something. Grendel's. Yeah, I remember Grendel for sure. Yeah. Oh, in the shitty movie, Grendel was a dragon, I think. Yeah, that really weird, like. Yeah. The CG. Uh, that was terrible, man. We ooh. watched that in class. That was out when I was in high school. Oh and, uh, God. Yeah. I remember even back then, before the CG was as dated, it was still looked like. Well, the, that entire movie was done in green screen, right? Like it's not even Angelina Jolie. I think it was like mocapped. They, oh. they weren't. It wasn't the physical human skin you were seeing. It was like all CG for no reason. I don't know. Uh, well, they wanted to do it on a soundstage. That's the reason. Yeah. It looked good to the investors. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. This dragon was a uh, something I learned on Neopets. Well, is there anything else you want to show uh, the viewers? Um, let's see. We can go. We can go through. I've, let's. Um. We're getting close to an hour and forty. Okay. Um, oh man, there's a shitty comic that I'm really happy to not have to show. I'll oh. show something just for you. I'll show some World of Warcraft drawings because yes. I know that. Yes. I know that you. Uh, you love them. Oh. The, We've got a blood fang. Yeah, the tier one rogue head and the tier two rogue head. Oh, so you were into uh, rogues at the time. Oh yeah, I played a rogue. My rogue's name was Ninja Backwards. I, you can tell I really oh, like ninjas, so, man. Ajin. A J N I N. Ajnin. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. You yeah, just edgy. wanted to be a ninja. I also like Okay, monkeys. so okay, but you're okay, so you were really young, but you're also aware of the stereotype of rogues at that time is that all rogues were like 9-year-olds who wanted to be ninjas. Uh Were you yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And did, I was really into ninjas, man. <laughs> like it was a uh, Dude, it's something there's something about like 9-year-olds and ninjas, dude. If you're the fastest kid in class, you're just in the ninjas. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, were you fast? Oh, fuck yeah. So you were the fastest kid? Okay, so you were athletically well, a ninja. Well, it was a really small school. Okay. Maybe I identified as, as, you know what I mean? Okay. But you're saying, like, there's actual physical truth. Like, you were fast, you were agile. I must have thought, like, okay, I can jump on things. What, yeah. what do you do if you can jump on things? Yeah, and parkour like, didn't oh, exist Oh, you at the become time. a ninja. Yeah. Um... So ninjas yeah. are awesome. They can commit seppuku anytime. They can go. They can flip out on people. I. I mean, I've read the Ultimate Ninja Guide. Oh, real Ultimate Power. Do you know that? No, I don't think so. I may have stumbled across it when I was a kid because oh. me and my brother would Google like how to be a ninja. What What's up with ninjas? How do we do this? Can we buy the the things they wear on their feet? Can we buy the masks? <laughs> Let me just ask you this, Wilder. Are you ready to get pumped? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the official ninja. If I saw this when I was a kid, I would have There's a book. Lost my mind. I would have bought into this pyramid scheme. Let me tell you about ninjas. Ninjas can kill anyone they want. Ninjas cut off heads all the time, and they even they don't even think twice about it. These guys are crazy and they're awesome. They flip out all the time. I heard that there was a ninja who was eating at a dinner, and when some dude dropped a spoon, the ninja literally killed the whole town. My friend Mark that he saw a ninja oh totally God. uppercut some kid because the kid opened a window, and that is what I call real ultimate power. Jeez, yeah, I I I, this would have been my uh, my homepage. When oh, was, this is this is legendary. Was, this is a this is a this is a book. I'm if surprised you don't know. I didn't stumble across it. Honestly, oh, there's a whole chapter about how to commit seppuku with a frisbee. This is like a a a joke, right? This is a dude that's like no, it's a night. Well, according to according to the author, it's a nine year old who loves ninjas oh, really with all his heart, and he wrote all this, and then he was able to get his older brother or an older friend to print it. Really? Yes. Oh my God. Well, this could okay. Have been me if I had so, more passion. Yeah. Oh then, my God. Look, here's how you do it. <laughs> this is how you kill yourself? No, this is just a hilarious nine-year-old. I think. I think maybe he's. Well, I don't know if it's real or not, but like <laughs> according to fucking kill yourself. No, no, no. According to, according to the lore of the book, that's that's oh, the reality. Okay. We don't know for sure. All right. It's I, clear. I, I, it's you. probably a joke. It's clearly a joke. I, this is a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the frisbee will open up. And yeah. <laughs> Clean the frisbee. Make sure your parents are around. Put something slippery on it, like butter or cream. Get super pissed. Fold the frisbee. This is crucial. <laughs> Keep oh, my God. Yeah. And then you push it hard until you can't see it, and this then you is, wait and yeah, you die. Yeah, this is like a hard parody of exactly who I was 
for sure. I'm so surprised you don't know about this. this we is... would try to, me and my brother would try to like wall run on a certain part of our, our backyard that had like the stucco so you could kind of grip to it. Were you able to? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can wall run on anything. It's just, you might do it badly and kind of slip, but. Oh, I've never wall run. You How do you do it? Do you do you run at the wall? Do you run sideways at the wall? Yeah, you run beside it and then you jump up and you just as long as you put your foot on it, you just technically a, it's a, it's a wall run. Okay, so if you if you do, <laughs> if you can do two steps, that's a wall run. Yeah. How many but, how many steps were you able to do? I mean, it was stucco, maybe three. I'd certainly oh, three is a lot. If I just jumped, I would have gone. Just yeah, because every time you step, you are lifting yourself off the wall. Theoretically, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Okay. I, I really like ninjas. I'm into. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm into I it. think that's probably. Oh yeah, and the next let's go the next, next one, one yeah, yeah, yeah. is not a drawing but just a cool animation-y thing. In this book on the very next page, which is the first page of the book that I drew that in, is uh, a note from Lisa. Is that is, is this Lisa the girl? Graining, Lisa Graining. Lisa Who was my uh, middle school English teacher who is L Lisa from the Simpsons, Matt Graining's sister. Oh. She taught at my uh, my middle school. Wow. Yeah, which is and a she weird wanted, coincidence. She wanted you to write more in the margins? This is like, I got a bad grade. I got a three out of five because <laughs> I didn't take enough notes. But oh, okay. okay. But uh, I just thought that was interesting that one of my teachers was Lisa. You're, wow. Uh, yeah. The animation through and through. I know. I'm into it, dude. Yeah. And you said this leads into the next thing? No, no, oh, I, no. I'm just saying this is a, an unrelated random thing I found while looking through all my childhood stuff. Wow. Was a, a note from, from D. Lisa. You were destined to work in adult entertainment. Oh, yeah. Adult animation entertainment. <laughs> whether, <laughs> adult you, entertainment. whether or not you become an adult entertainment star later, I don't know, but it's possible. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's that's everything I have to show, dude. I think that I think that wraps everything up. Let's go play. The, let's play the lower thirds one more time. So we saw Wilder Reese, the character designer from Rick and Morty. We saw you at your highest and lowest. <laughs> Do you think is this your lowest? I would say this is pretty high, to be honest. Um, this is. I think this is art peak. I think. If we really got a full scope, if I had everything I ever drew, I think we would see some more uh, really edgy, uh, weird ninja hair guys. That and maybe that's the, the the lowest low. Yeah, I've got stuff like that, but I didn't show it. I I think I have less cringe than you've shown on previous episodes, but I think I also I'm have the, much less technical ability. Uh, I'm well. I like. I think my ability to not be able to look at myself enables me to be the god of cringe <laughs> and my unfiltered ability to want to just keep making stuff and that's what you gotta do man yeah and the and the and the i'm trying to grasp for attention <laughs> constantly keeps me making the worst stuff ever I mean, it, it, that's a, a superpower in art because you it's there's such a ridiculous learning curve to getting to the point where you can draw well. You need to produce so much crap that you need, you to, need draw to have that, that drive. Yeah. You need if, to... you, if your only reward will come from doing good drawings, those are the people that just drop out immediately because it's not going to happen for several years, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to love the, the weird shit you're doing. The life-sized Evangelion pinups <laughs> need to... You know, just wait. Get just, you excited. <laughs> we're gonna re, we're gonna revisit that. I have to now that you now we've brought it up. I have to show it. I might have a picture. All right. Well, it's been a romp. It's been a riot. It's been an hour and forty seven minutes and thirty seconds. So I thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Wilder, for joining me. Thanks for having me on. Dude, it's been, been legitimately fun. Hopefully the audio doesn't suck. Hopefully we got everything figured out this time. We're gonna play the uh, <laughs> the lower thirds one more time, and we'll see you in the next one, guys. And hopefully you stayed all the way through. So I will see you guys next time.